Here we are, part three. I apologize, having some technical difficulties, but here we are, alas. So I ended video two by talking about the skin fold equations. You're going to have the sum of the seven skin folds. You're going to input it into either the male or female equation. And I've given you my version just to help you go through it. So this is actually my information from the video. I'm a little embarrassed to say that was me that was being pinched. Please, no judgment. And these are the actual, this is the actual data. So the sum of my seven skin fold sites was 126. I'm using the body density equation for women because I'm a woman. Notice I'm doing things in parentheses first. And to even help myself with this equation, I put brackets in red to help us go through what has to happen first. So you can see the first thing I did was I just wrote the sum of skin fold where it needed to be. I wrote the age where it needed to be. And then this 15,876 is the sum of the skin fold squared. After I did that, then I did the multiplication inside the brackets. So I took 0 0.0004691 times this number, and I got this. Then I took this number, it's got six zeros, times this 15,000 number, and I got this. Lastly, I did the age times that number, and I got this. Once you've done that, then you can work your way from left to right and just do the simple subtraction and addition. The body density number should be 1.0 something. If you do this equation and you get something else than 1.042 or 21 or 1.01, .01, then you did not do it properly. So for men and women, when you do the body density equation, <clears throat> excuse me, you should get a number that's 1.0 something. Once you find your body density, then you're going to put that into the Brozek formula, which is the same for both men and women. Pretty simple. 457 divided by the body density, do that first, and then subtract 414 from that. So you can see in this, <clears throat> once I found the body density, which for me was 1.04157, I inputted that. So I did 457 divided by my body density, 1.0457, and I got this number, then I took that number and subtracted 414, and based on my skin fold, 24.7% body fat. You can do it, folks. Okay, two more to talk about for body fat percentage. One of them is the Near Infrared Interactants Device, or the NIR. I'm a little sad because we finally, we finally got one. But right now it is sitting unused. What a sad tale. We can still talk about it. So what's the mechanism for the NIR device? An infrared light is put usually through the biceps brachii muscle. And similar to the BIA unit, the BIA unit uses an electrical current. The NIR device uses light. When you shine a light source through the tissue, that light travels at different speeds and refracts differently through lean versus fat mass. And from that, <clears throat> the unit is able to give us an estimate of body fat percentage. What are the pros? Well, it's easier than the skin fold. You just gotta put this little probe up against the bicep. Here's the probe right there. You put that up against the biceps brachia, you press a button, it spits out a number. It is cheaper than the bod pod may not be as cheap as the BIA device, and it's easy to use. What are the cons? Um, we're only measuring one site on the body, so we're not getting as much information as the skin fold over seven sites. Um, 
and it can lack in accuracy at some points. I'm going to show you the video. Even though we can't use the NIR device, I took a video of me using it just to show you. I know you're excited. You can see on the left, that's a little comp computer unit for the NIR device, and it's attached to a laptop. So you can see I'm inputting information. So for a given subject, you would input their birth date. You can see my birth date. Gifts are accepted on or around September 12th. You can put in the gender and you put in the height. You click next and it's going to enter weight. And now we're ready to do the measurement. So you can see an X has been marked halfway between the shoulder and the elbow. And then we're going to pick up the NIR unit. So that little black unit, we want to protect anybody using the equipment from that light ray. So we have a little shield. We put that on the X with the gray stripe of that shield facing up towards the axilla or the armpit. And then I simply press the button. It's going to have us do it again. So I take the unit away and then I put it back and press the number again. It's going to give me the numbers, results. And of course, when I'm done, I remove the shield and I put it back there. Before I go back to the uh, video to talk about the NIR device, during recording of this session, there was a cat blooper, which I thought everyone would enjoy seeing. So during body. the body fat percentage, my little Kima decided to put her black tail with a white tip on it right through there. <laughs> never fails. Okay, so this is actually the results from the NIR device for me. Let's change color. Let's do green. I like green. We can see that according to this, the body fat percentage was 25.7%. That compares pretty reasonably with the skin fold that was 24 point something. And then it get, for the total weight that I inputted, 152, it breaks down how, how much of the 152 pounds was lean mass versus fat mass. It's going to have the fat mass over here. Lean mass, 112.9%. And then the fat mass would be the remaining, 22 plus 12 plus 5, 39 so my fat mass was 39.1 pounds, lean mass 112.9. That, that also gives us the BMI, fine. It estimates body water, not sure how accurate that is. And it also estimates our basal metabolic rate, which we did our calculation for the basal metabolic rate in the Metcart lab last week. So we already know what that is. And lastly, the NIR device gives us... Um, these little scales to tell us how our body fat percentage fared. So for me, they rate 25.7 as a female, 40 years old as good. I would argue that this scale is a little bit harsh. Um, for a 40-year-old female, I think 25% would be more in this category. Not that I want to toot my own horn, but I think it's a little harsh. All right, the last technique to talk about is the bod pod. Also sad because we have a brand new bod pod in the stadium classroom building. Brand new one that is sitting there unused. So, so sad. Make sure, nonetheless, that you review the mechanism. So this is going to measure air displacement. So this little chamber, if someone's not sitting in it, and when you calibrate it, it has a known volume of air. And because it has a known volume of air, when someone goes to sit in it, you displace a certain amount of that air. And based off of how much of that air you displace, 
from the amount that was there originally, we can estimate body fat percentage. One of the best ways that I think to explain this would be thinking about this if it were water. So I know Dr. Thompson, back in the day when I was an undergrad, when I was in college, we did the hydrostatic weighing where you had a tank of water. So in that scenario, the tank of water has a known volume of water. Just like this, bod pod has a known volume of air. In each case, when you submerge into that tank of water, you displace water. Just like when you go into the bod pod, which has a known volume of air, you displace some of that air. With the water displacement, <clears throat> you can think about it like a cannonball test. Think of the summertime. If someone does a cannonball into the pool, someone that has more body fat is going to displace more water and have a bigger splash of that cannonball. Similar idea here with the bod pod, even though you can't see, you can't particularly see the amount of air being displaced. What are the pros and cons of this? I think you're pretty well familiar with the pros and cons. What are the pros? It is the most accurate way. Uh, what are the pros? It's easy to use. A little computer unit walks you right through it. What are the pros? It's relatively non-invasive. People do have to wear the right equipment, but it's non-invasive. What are the cons? The biggest con would be cost. This is easily a $40,000 piece of equipment. What are the cons? You have to have the place for it. Um, someone does have to get into a certain, either a bathing suit or spandex or compression shorts, which might be a con for some people. Let's go to the video. So this one has sound. This is actually from my dissertation where I was having a familiarization pod, video, reading, but here you go. So depending on your level of comfort, it could be a sports bra and a it could be a one-piece bathing suit, or just depending on your shorts. level of comfort, it could that be way, a sports no bra and spandex. Also, it could be a one-piece bathing suit, so my here or just need to spandex take out shorts, the nose ring and the ear that way, no air can be uh, before the study. Also, the subject will put on so my subject mm -hmm. here would need to take out this is the a way to ring the earrings uh, before the study. The, head. the subject will put it's pretty on pretty easy with how it goes BB. after some initial um, this is a way to scale measurements. So I'm just going to go into the bod pod. The head. Pretty easy with how it goes after some initial um, scale measurements. So I'm just if at any go point the, the subject pod. feels uncomfortable, you can stop the test at any time. If at any point the subject this will involve three 30 30 seconds at any time. And then you come out and you're done. This will involve three 30 second readings. And then you come out and you're done. Look at that, folks. Look at that. Okay. So that's all for the video. It's going to be your turn to do some lab assignments here. I wish we were in person, but we are going to give you some numbers to play with. Good luck.